lot of people asking the question about Ron Combrant, what's his situation? I've looked at since the start of this year is, uh, you know, players showing form, good form. That was one of the big criteria that uh, I've used. And at this point in time, after Super Rugby, Ron hasn't played any rugby for Contessa Lioness. You know, he's been there for three games and he hasn't started any game. So it, it makes it difficult. And I bent my fingers last year when we had players coming from France. Uh, in the inbound series, and we spoke about their conditioning and we spoke about their fitness level. So we're at a crucial stage of uh, our campaign at this point in time. Maybe not to be in the race to win it, but uh, we're still in uh, two important games to finish second and uh, an important home games to, to end well. And, uh, you know, for me, it, 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 if the player doesn't play, how, how do we expect the player to perform coming from, from that, uh, and I've coached in Japan myself, do you respect from, from club rugby to make that step up in, in, uh, in, in, in at national level? There's one thing of understanding and knowing how a player played a year ago and six months ago or three months ago and, and the condition the play is at present. And, and, and for me, um, I'm following all our players playing abroad very, very closely because I've, I've learned that lesson last year. And Francois Lowe, has come back, yes, he's joined us, fully fit. He's come through a magnificent pre-season. Um, he's stronger than what he's before. He had three good games for Bath, and, the, and he's played well. And, uh, you know, he's ready to play Test Match Rugby. And uh, I've got no doubt that uh, without Jakub Krill there, that's a kind of player that would add value to our turnaround strategy, uh, you know, in this, uh, for the last two games. He brings what we probably lacking in Yako Krill, is that playing towards the ball and uh, making sure that we, we contest on the, on, the, on the ground and not giving teams necessarily that quick ball that they, you know. Uh, I think uh, Sia played really, really well as an open side at the beginning of the season. He stood in really well, but I could see the difference when Yako joined up with Sia. Like almost in tandem, uh, they were flipping hard on the ground, and uh, we we saw the benefits from that. So you know, Francois will make massive, uh, add massive value, and also in terms of his leadership, and and has been yeah done it before, and now at least uh, he's he's not just fitter and stronger, but he's also one of those players who want to play for South Africa. He wants to play, and he's a guy that 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 phones after a test. And, and he's excited about, you know, the new culture in the team. He, he finds out those kind of small things, which might not seem to be important, but it's very important to see where the overseas-based players, where their loyalties are still at this point in time. And uh, I can say without uh, any fear that Francois wants to be a Springboks, still wants to play for the Springboks. Uh, just to follow up on that, um, you say Rowan hasn't played. Uh, the, the obvious answer to that is that Andre also didn't play, but he came back into... How do the two differ? The difference, obviously, is I've, I've got Hanre with the coaches in our coaching team, training here with us, putting in extra sessions with us, and, uh, and, and he's up to speed with our technical and, uh, uh, ability and game plan and where this team want to go. Look, this is the first time this year that we have this group really together for six, seven test matches, and continuity is an important thing. It does play a part as well in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what we've gone through, uh, we've had a substandard game. We we we're not proud of of, of the last game, uh, but we've put that behind us now. You know, we've uh, sort of buried the Albany uh, game, and we're busy with the turnaround strategy. And we, we we got together last night. We spoke about it as management team. That was the first meeting. Uh, second one, the, the leaders, obviously, and the coaches have been together after uh, after the game. So. We disappointed, obviously, uh, ourselves and, uh, and, and our supporters, and we would like to turn it around and make sure that we get it right. Alistair, is Ruan still part of your future plans? Well, obviously, uh, all the players playing overseas who have played more than uh, 50 games to qualify will be part of the plans. Yes, Ruan could be possible, could possibly be part of the plans. If he performs and he plays well, and I've got feedback, and not guess, and not hope that he, if he's showing form, good form, and he plays. Uh, the reality is, players based overseas 
cannot play the last game against Welsh, uh, Wales for us, uh, the Welsh test, because that's outside the season. But yes, he, he's still part of the plans going forward.